Well, join me, Marcus, as I take a short walk around a part of Porthcawl known as the Wilderness. And again, this walk's very short and suitable for nearly everyone, unlike some of my other walks. Well, this little area is often overlooked, even by people who live in Porthcawl. And as a result, it's never really that busy. And as you can hear, it's quite quiet as well. And despite looking man-made and relatively new, this wetland area goes back a long time. And there's history here dating back to pre-Norman times and Viking times. And we'll discuss some of that as we walk around. Well, today, the sun is trying to come out and it is relatively warm. Over the last few weeks in Wales, it's been raining nearly every day. It's been horrible, but it looks promising today. By the way, as we walk around the lake, there's one thing I want your help with. So stay tuned for that. As I walk around the lake, you'll see there are lots of ducks and I have brought some food for them. But don't worry, no bread. I've been looking at the River and Canal Trust, what to feed ducks, and it's oats, seeds, rice. Apparently they like rice and frozen peas, but as long as they're defrosted. And also they like lettuce and kale, which I didn't know. So we'll feed some ducks on the way around. I'm starting here by this notice board, which is close to the junction of Northways and Woodland Avenue and by a road called Gerachlin. And if you look at this old map, there is an old well in this area where those men are. Well, the walk itself, as I've mentioned, is short, just over half a mile, one kilometer, and it is fully tarmacked all the way around. And as usual, I'll put a link to the map in the description below. So that's the info done. Let's get started. So the wilderness area, it looks relatively new and man-made, but it's been here for thousands of years. And back in the Viking age, they could actually navigate a boat up the inlet as far as Nottage Village. And if you look at this flood map, this current flood map, you can still see the shape of that inlet coming in from around Coney Beach, coming right in all the way up to St. David's Well. Now, the water is channeled underground and it comes out at Porthcawl Harbour. So after about 20 yards, we do have a choice. We can go through the woods up there or take the tarmac path this way. So I'm going this way, alongside the lake. On our left, we've got some standing stones, some carved standing stones. And as you can see, they are quite new. I think they date from 2010 and were carved by dragon stone carvings. There are a few more around the wilderness and we'll see those as we walk around. You can't believe we're in the middle of Porth Core. It's so quiet. But saying that, I've spotted something. It's Councillor Aspie. What's he doing in the woods? Hello, Sean. What are you doing lurking in the woods? You all right? Yeah. God. God. About the time the sun came out, I don't know what that what yellow thing is. I know, I was saying at the start, yeah. we've had like weeks and weeks of rain. So, are you walking around with me? Yeah, I think we'll... Uh, you can manage this one. Oh, the I ducks... Can I, what do you mean? What? Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're showing the beauty of nature, not telling anything to shut up. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Right, come on. By the way, Sean, 
I did mention to you I need your help. Oh, right. And I don't know if you'll know anything about it. I doubt it. But there's one thing up here. Let's go take a look. I want your help, viewers. What do you think this is? So hidden in the bushes on the left bank of the lake, close to the houses, is that standing stone. And you can see it's well carved. It's not marked on any of the archaeological surveys at all. They have got the old stones marked, which have been taken away now. They would be up by the dual carriageway and beyond that estate there. But not that stone. Somebody online I saw said, is it a mooring stone? A few ways I disagree with that. It's quite high up and away from the water. They said, oh, the carvings could be ropes, but this was never a busy area, even when it was navigated. There weren't many boats coming up here and they were small. They wouldn't cause that amount of carving. And also, how come it's still standing with these trees around it? To me, I think it could be an old stone, but it's been put there or stood up again. It may be left over from the stones that were a few hundred yards over there and it's just been propped up again. I don't know, if you know, and I don't want any lunatic saying it's about ancient Celtic tribes from Egypt and all that nonsense. I want some facts, please. What do you think it is? To me, it does look like an old stone, but what's it doing here? A mystery. So let's go and rejoin the path. I got some duck food or some rice. Oh, Apparently, right, yeah. they like rice. And uh, they're frozen peas or something. Yeah, but you have to defrost them first. Yeah. And lettuce. Yes, they're not allowed. And kale. Things. Bread is not good for them. So how many birds did we kill when we were kids then? Because we always give them bread. <laughs> so we're walking back to rejoin the tarmac path. It's only about 20 yards up that slope towards the houses to find the standing stone. So we've got some coots. Those are the mallards, aren't they? That was nicked a grape. Oh yeah. They prefer grapes to rice. Sean, when I was looking at the old tithe map, Right. I think it dates from the early 19th century. Right. This area was owned by the Reverend Henry Knight. Yes. Who used to live here. Yeah. Uh, and it was down as pasture and right. water meadow. Right. So pretty much as it is now, really. It's not really changed a lot. No. You probably can hear the, the dual carriageway in the background. But this area down here, is that the inlet from... Nottage area. Yeah, because the actual culvert style is across opposite the roundabout. Yeah, yeah, so, so basically. Into this. Yeah, it came down from yeah. Nottage and it would have come in here now. You can see it's all been contained. And this then feeds under Salt Lake and into the harbour. Uh, into the harbour, yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah. So, as well as the ducks, you got the coots, the moorhens. Sean, are there any more hens? They're the ones with the red bits, not the white bits. There's something about, there's something about their feet. They've got really creepy feet. Well, the more hens like the rice. Sean, what? I've got another story about the wilderness. Is it true or false? Is it true or false? What do you think? True or false? It's from the Glamorgan Gazette, 1916. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey. 
it could be the same quality magazine or yeah, paper. Or they paint on the saucepan. Uh, yeah. Gossip in the cafe. But anyway, <laughs> 1916. It was Thomas and Cassie Russell from Philadelphia Road, where I used to live. So they must be dodgy. Yeah, they're dodgy as hell then. They were caught stealing shrubs from the wilderness. And they were prosecuted. And it was owned by Mr. Blendall. I think Thomas Russell was serving in the army. And I think because of that, they were lenient on them. So we got let off. And she was quite embarrassed. So I think nothing really happened to them. But anyway, don't steal shrubs from the wilderness. Sean did point out Green Flag Award. The mark of quality park or green space. Shall we continue? Yeah. Yep. And the sun is coming out. And I don't know if you can see some more of those new standing stones by Dragonstone Carving. My mother used to live near here when she was a kid, just one street away in Nichols Avenue. And she said she remembers playing here. There was another boy. She never saw him. She used to hear him playing in the woods. She used to call him Tarzan. She never really knew who he was. <laughs> He may still be there, we never know. I was saying it's only a short walk, just over half a mile to walk around. I think it's longer than that. No, I did the, I did the route. Oh. It's just 0 0.6 of a mile. And we're coming up to another sculpture, a wooden one this time. I don't know the name of this one, so if you know the name of this wooden sculpture we're coming up to, let us know. It's a lovely carving, mine. I did look online hmm? to find out the name of it. I couldn't find it. There are a lot of photographs of it, yeah. but no name of it. And there's nothing around the base either. So behind this fence, there is a little island area which you can't get to. So it's quite overgrown this side and you can see some of the island over there. It's very small, but you can't get to it. The water itself isn't very deep. I think it's only about four foot at its deepest point. And we're following shore now. There's another sculpture, not quite as good. Straight ahead of you. <laughs> no, it's not called hailing a taxi. <laughs> I did find the name of this one. This one's called Keeper of the Lake, apparently, Sean. Right. Looks like she is hailing a taxi. Yeah. Or advertising deodorant. Well, she's not German, we know that. <laughs> or Spanish or Italian. There's a few of them around <laughs> the borough. The Keeper of the Lake is here. I think the one up. Ken figures called the Keeper of the Dunes or Keeper of the Sand, something like that. Mm. Let's continue for the last part. Yeah. Another swan, not paying any notice whatsoever. He's got some sort of a injury on his left hand side.
so we've made it around the lake, around the wilderness, back to where we started. A pleasant walk, very peaceful, in the centre of Porthcore, just over half a mile, 0.6, one kilometre. You enjoy it? Very much so, like I said, yeah. so Look how quiet it is in the centre of town. Very peaceful around here. Definitely worth a visit. Yeah. So, remember, until next time, keep walking. Bye.